Now, I know I'm definitely a bit late to the party, but I'd say about a year ago was the first time I came across modern Minecraft houses. And I gotta say, I think these just look awesome. They look absolutely amazing, and I really hadn't seen anything like them before. Now, admittedly, the shaders certainly help, but these are still really cool builds. I think the style really suits Minecraft, mostly because, you know, they're, they're fairly square, they're cubes, and Minecraft is a game based on cubes, but they all seem to use an absolutely horrendous amount of quartz. A vanilla survival Minecraft, at least. So, you'd probably think it'd be a fairly terrible idea to attempt to build one of these as your starter house, right? Well, welcome to 200 Days Building a Modern Starter House. Part 1. Starting out. So, we're starting out on Infinite Realms, which is currently a 1.18, pretty much vanilla survival Minecraft server. It's got a couple of fairly minor mods, like proximity chat, um, it's like a player head data pack thing, and it's like a custom item plugin mod thing, uh, but I don't know if anybody's actually made anything for that yet. Uh, everyone on the server is a Minecraft content creator of some description. There's people that stream, people that do YouTube, some that do both. Uh, but for this particular project, I pretty much tried to do it all myself. Uh, though I did get a couple of bits and pieces from other people, but they were kind of like the last things that I needed. Now, full disclosure, I didn't come up with this design that I'm going to build. Uh, it's from a builder who goes by the name Jintube, link in the description, but chances are that if you've ever searched for modern house tutorials, you've probably come across their channel. They got a whole bunch of really cool designs, and I just picked one that I thought looked really nice. Uh, they also supply a mostly accurate material list, which was a big help. It, it meant I could work away at gathering all the resources I needed, and then just sit down and build the entire thing in a couple of sessions. Now, I went for this approach, as opposed to like designing my own thing, because, uh, you know, although I built a couple of things that I think turned out alright, I really wanted to end up with something cool at the end of this. And it was also going to give me a chance to pick up some new techniques for building in this style. You know, in case I ever decide that I want to build something that requires over a thousand quarts ever again. Now, the first thing I needed to do was actually get to the location I'd chosen. Uh, we'd been given the seed before server launch so we could sort of work out our plans in advance, and I'd found a nice looking mountain to start by. Is, is anybody not building beside a mountain in 1.18? Uh, but the slight issue I had was this was over 5,000 blocks from spawn. It, it took me two days to even get there. On my journey to the location, I got to experience some of the new terrain generation in 1.18. It's pretty darn cool. I usually play modded so we're normally a couple of versions behind so quite cool to play with the newest stuff that's coming out. Um, I found ice biomes, villages, and even managed to snag some early game diamonds and potatoes. First time coming across this loose snow as well. On day three, I'd finally made it. Uh, this place just looked awesome. Uh, I decided I was going to sort of start off building off to the side for an industrial or just kind of preparation type area. I didn't want to mess up where I was going to be actually building the house. Uh, there was also a village in the area, just up on the mountain, but uh, I wanted to build kind of far away from that so they didn't all, you know, despair to zombies. Uh, you can get villages that trade for quartz blocks, and uh, at the time I thought that might just be quite handy. Part 2. Preparing for resource gathering. On day 4, I started the preparations. Starting with just some basic mining to try and find myself some iron, I needed to gear up before I could really start making any progress, especially if I was going to be mining quartz. I, I was going to be mining quartz. On day 5 I found a spider spawner, which would be a potentially handy thing for an XP farm later on, but I was still just struggling away trying to find iron. Days 6 to 8 were spent mining deeper underground, where I found a mine shaft that had a bunch of cool stuff. These new caves are just awesome. By day 11 I'd actually managed to find some diamonds, enough that I could think about heading to the nether for some quartz mining, though I still thought villages might be the easier route at this point. I did run out of food however, and I thought it would probably be a good idea to get started on some basic farms. By day 12 I'd organised all of my resources for mining, and got a small farm set up, and thought about heading to the village to get carrots and beetroot. Not really for any particular reason, I just like collecting all of the foods, though carrots for night vision mining might be nice. On day 13 I actually ventured over to the village to check it out. It's pretty small and the generation was pretty rough. Probably need to prioritise getting a villager breeder set up before I lose too many. Uh, I also got some more farms set up, wrangled some cattle, uh, in preparation for a full enchanting setup. Could be quite nice. Days 15 to 19 were spent trying to get lava for making obsidian. This was just one of those times where I couldn't seem to find any. I ventured around the area, climbed the mountain, with leather boots to stop me sinking into the snow, and dug to the bottom of the world. I actually ended up setting up a dripstone lava generator. Kind of a last resort. Surely eventually I'd be finding a lava pool. 
On day 20 I trap uh, secured some villagers in a house. I was going to use these guys for breeding a bunch more for doing some trading. I also may have died to a creeper. Rip those levels. By day 21 I'd managed to breed one villager. Nice. Also managed to create an additional bit of lava with this dripstone setup, but this was a pretty slow process and I didn't have any more dripstone to expand it. So it was time to head back down into the caves to find some more. By day 22 I'd managed to find a lava pool and got enough obsidian for a nether portal. I set it up and jumped on through. It wasn't the best spawn though. Uh, it was next to a nether fortress with place spawners which was nice, but I did kind of want to compare villager trading to just mining for quartz, maybe seeing which was more efficient, but uh, probably want to get fortune 3 first. Over days 25 to 28 I worked on setting up an area for breeding villagers. I just kind of expanded one of the existing houses in the village, uh, just so I could fill the bottom of it with beds. Nothing too fancy here, but uh, getting some type of trading hall thing set up at the base would probably be a good idea. Might be able to get fortune or mending books. Could be quite good. On day 30 I was setting up a villager trading hall. Just a temporary one at this stage and I popped down to the mineshaft underground to borrow some rails for transporting villagers all the way from the village. And after a lot of pain, a lot of pain, on day 36 I was cycling through librarian trades. I was starting to think that I might be better off setting up an enchanting setup, uh, try my luck that way, because I mean look at this, efficiency 5 but just throwing it away to try and get fortune. Days 37 to 39 ish were spent mining trying to get to level 30. I'd managed to get fortune 3 on an enchanting table. I kind of lost track of time, I didn't really want to sleep and reset my spawn. You know, it, it took so long to get from spawn to my base so you know. Uh, I also spent a bit of time trading and smelting ores to build up experience. And I died at level 29.5. On day 40 I was trying to replenish my levels. Even gave fishing a go, but uh, it was kind of boring so spent my time getting another villager for trading for emeralds. This guy had beetroot and carrot trades and I even managed to get a mini book on the librarian. But without converting him from a zombie the prices were a tad expensive, but hey mending's mending I guess. By day 43 I'd managed to level up a stonemason to the point where he'd trade quartz. He could trade for 12 blocks before his trades got locked. And working it out it seemed like I'd need to trade with him about 105 times to get all the quartz I need. And I think you can only kind of get full trade reset like twice a day so not great. I guess if I had a bunch of villagers leveled up it might not be too bad. I just didn't feel like setting up like a massive villager trading hall before I even had a house. Uh, at this point I was thinking that fortune 3 and just mining in the nether would be a significantly faster way of getting quartz. Plus I could use the XP I'd get for mining for enchanting my gear. On day 49 I finally got back up to level 30 and I even got efficiency 4 from the enchant. Uh, nice. I didn't actually have enough iron to make an anvil to put mending on my pickaxe just yet so I had to go grab some more iron but uh, now. Now I was ready to start grinding out all of the quartz I was going to need. I could actually start preparing all of these materials. There's quite a bit of stuff I'm going to need for this thing. Part 3. Getting the resources. I spent days 51 to 52 just mining in the nether. And this was way way faster than trading with villagers. I definitely need like a whole trading hall to make that way worth it, but I mean at least I had some emeralds and access to mending so it wasn't a complete waste of time. Days 53 to 54 were a bit of a detour. Uh, my armor sucked and I'd really like some diamonds so I decided to try and get some armor of villagers. This was painful and I wasn't even sure that these guys were going to give me the trades that I wanted, uh, but on days 55 to 57 I just decided to go mine for diamonds underground and I got quite a few so just crafted the armor myself. Days 57 to 59 were spent back in the nether but my rates were way down. I think I'd just gotten all of the easy to get to quartz but I did a bit of exploration and I managed to find a bastion and uh, sneakily grab some of the loot before running away. Uh, the XP for mining all this quartz also got me some okay enchants on my diamond armor. Nice. On days 60 to 63 I decided to try strip mining for quartz, but this quickly devolved into spam mining. Uh, on the plus side, in the process I found enough netherite to upgrade my pick. Sweet. Uh, I did use up all my durability though. Uh, to solve this I tried fishing for a few days, 
got an enchanted fishing rod. I eventually managed to repair my pick and uh, did manage to fish up some treasure, but uh, I really don't think this was worth it in the end. On day 72, I decided to just try and find some more open nether wastes for getting some more quartz. The biomes around me were pretty bad for finding it, you couldn't just find it out in the open. And once I did find that biome I was looking for, I mined for about an hour and a half and actually managed to get more quartz than the list told me I was going to need. I'm barely sure that list was a little bit short on how much I needed, but I could have also just lost it when I was moving some stuff later. But awesome. The big grind was over. Surely I was almost ready to start building the house now that I had all of that quartz. Uh, yeah. No. Not quite. It was day 85 before I finally made it back from my big mining trip. I managed to finish off enchanting my armor with the experience I'd gotten, and then Brad, aka Brad Boss, stopped by to drop off an elytra. For very cheap. I didn't quite have audio recording working properly at this point, but I was going to hold off using this elytra until I'd finished my house, as I'd like to fully experience what it would be like to do this in single player. The, the novelty of this eventually wore off. Now, it turns out that there's actually way more concrete in this build than there is quartz, but at least that's kind of fairly easy to get. I spent the next 15 days out like collecting sand and stuff. I eventually managed to find a nearby beach, because I couldn't quite locate a desert, and then I managed to get enough gravel just digging around uh, underground in the caves. Days 101 to 116 were spent collecting more gravel, getting the dyes I needed, and um, there may or may not be a data pack that lets you turn coal into black dye, which may or may not have saved me a whole bunch of squid hunting. <laughs> I thought about doing it more legit, but I mean, it's already on the server and I, I couldn't be bothered hunting squids. Uh, I also had to go travel quite a distance to find jungle wood, dark oak and bamboo, as well as some mushroom blocks too. I spent around two and a half hours just getting some of these kind of random bits and pieces I was going to need. I mean, in the end, the grind for quartz was not the most time consuming thing, getting the materials for this build. Days 117 to 130 were also spent assembling the bits and pieces I was going to need. I did kind of have most of the stuff I needed stashed somewhere in my junky chests, but there were still some odd bits and pieces like turtle eggs and end rods that I was going to need to get. Now, other people on the server had already been end rating at this point, so I was seriously considering just buying or borrowing some end rods because I really just wanted to start building soon. I then spent days 131 to 135 getting turtle eggs, which is something I'd never done before. Turtles are cool, and uh, I was also out looking for a desert. Turned out I needed some green dye, and I had exactly zero cactus. Uh, I did manage to find a massive savanna, but it didn't actually turn out to be connected to a desert. Sad times. One of the other more obscure things I needed to get was one fire coral. This might have been the most effort I went through to get a single item. I spent days 136 or 139 just locating a coral reef, and then it turns out you need a silk touch pickaxe to get the coral blocks, which I thought I needed. Turns out it was just the red leafy coral thing you can get with shears that I actually wanted, but uh, I ended up creating a nether portal and made a path all the way back to my base through the nether. I didn't fancy the 3000 block trip potentially multiple times, and uh, who knows, maybe I'd want some tropical fish in the future. On day 145, I think I almost had everything that I needed. Uh, during that time, Lowy Cool had come along and linked up my nether portal to everyone else's. It turns out it was still a fair distance in the nether, about uh, 700 blocks, so I really did appreciate him going through all that effort. Uh, I then took advantage of this to go and flog a single cactus from Brad Boss's base. He, he had two. You know, this, this stuff grows back. Now, despite thinking that I was almost finished and I had all of the random bits and pieces I was going to need, I still spent days 146 to 170 getting ready. Uh, a lot of this was spent terraforming slash flattening the area where the house was going to go. I, I think this took the majority of the time. And then I ventured over to the Lost Yeti's base to grab some end rods, as I really could not be bothered finding an end city at this point. Day 170, and I was still living outside. Dude. That helps you out a little bit. Yeah, when we went to the ends not too long ago, I kind of stockpiled as many as I could while we were out there, so I didn't have to make the trek. But then, I suddenly, you know, I had everything that I thought I needed, and it was finally, finally time to actually start building. Part 4 Building the House. Now, I underestimated how long building this thing was actually going to take. 
I think in total it took me around about seven hours, though there was a slight detour in the middle. I was kind of following the tutorial pretty closely, uh, linked in the description. Uh, and at one point I thought I needed four extra sea lanterns. So I went out on a big trip, tried stealing some from an ocean monument, died, uh, got my stuff back, eventually managed to get the sea lanterns, and then it turned out these were just placeholder blocks in the video. But, in total, I spent days 171 to 216 building this thing. There were a couple of things that seemed a little bit short on the materials list, like turtle eggs and sea pickles, but uh, for the most part I had everything I needed. But hey, let's have a little bit of a time lapse of this build, and I'll see you back when we're done. There we have it. About seven hours condensed down into uh, about a minute, I think it was. Yeah, sped up quite a bit, but I uh, thought I'd just have a quick walk around and just have a bit of a look. Now, it's actually been a couple of days since uh, we finished this off, and I've actually come along and added in some storage in a, in a secret area <laughs> just down here. Uh, not finished at all, um, and not organized but just somewhere to put all the absolute mountain of junk I've managed to acquire and you know, smelting up some ores that I went not mine for. This is obviously a pretty cool build and there's lots of little details that are quite nice as well. Things like this towel on the wall. I mean, uh, there's a couple of things I couldn't do. Uh, like the snow was actually supposed to be like stacked snow, but that'll, that'll melt. So not a thing we can do in survival. Sort of thing happened up here where, uh, in the actual design that I was copying, uh, they actually had snow kind of piled up at different heights to give like different different sized pillows. But again, snow melts, so I think I actually do have a snow block here. But obviously, this isn't a bed, so I've snuck a bed down and under here, so you can't actually sleep here, but you're like sleeping on the pillows. This is still kind of cool. Um, we got our <laughs> coral that took ages to get. Uh, like a couple of towels or shirts hanging in the closet, uh, something like that. I really like the skylight. This is this is a nice view. This is also a nice view, but I would like to do something with the beach. Just not sure what yet. Not sure what yet. Uh, yeah, just all these wee furniture things are really neat. Great starter house. <laughs> uh, terrible idea. Terrible idea. This took a long time, but uh, it's pretty cool. And we got the bamboo growing here, which I need to kind of put string on to to keep it at, you know, random height so it looks neat. But yeah, this thing here, this piece of art, that's a fantastic little touch. I really, really like that. Um, and then there's a similar thing over here too, um, just with the different shades of wood. And then a little uh, mention of uh, the guy that designed the house there, hidden away. But yeah, pretty neat, pretty neat. This outdoor area is so cool, using the azaleas as like a tablecloth. I'm a big fan of this design and I'm stoked that it's finally done. Now, I've done a little bit of terraining here, but this this isn't great. Uh, I want to do something, something with all of this. But that's not a job for today. And we got these neat little trees, um, which look a little bit cooler in the tutorial video because it's got some resource pack or something that makes the, the leaves like bushy, which is cool. So not, not quite as good, but that's sweet. And obviously we don't have shaders on just at the moment. And it does look fantastic. And actually, well, let's let's just have a little bit of a look with shaders on because uh, that's when this thing really shines. 
There we go. That, I mean, that looks fantastic. Oh, the water. The water is definitely the best part of shaders, right? That looks really cool. Now, I could almost play with shaders on all the time. My FPS isn't great. Uh, yeah, not, not great. I, if I turn the render distance down, it's not too bad, but I like being able to see. Yeah, this ah, oh, this looks this all looks really good with uh, with the shaders on. I like this little kitchen we got with the the drawers. Would be cool if you could stop these from blowing in the wind because they're kind of like the you know the the handles of the drawers, which is neat. Like this oven flue thing, although that's actually just going into the floor. But we just pretend that doesn't happen. And a fridge. I guess this is like the door, or maybe yeah, uh, it's part of the fridge. And paintings with uh, lights hidden behind them. It's all really cool. It's all really cool. I probably want to hide this slightly better than it is. Maybe like a, but a little bit of redstone and maybe a lever or a button you push that actually opens this. Would be neat. Ah, but it's fine. Fine the way it is. Cannot complain. Nice little water feature out here. And yes, the the horse, classic horse, two point Now has neat gold armor. And I'm going to try and find some diamond for him. But yeah, the, the terrain leaves a little bit to be desired. Like this big ugly dirt bit. Uh, but yeah, I'll spend some time figuring out how we're going to make this look a bit better. And maybe even set up some type of bridge along here. I made it into like a path, but I, I don't actually think that improved it. But yeah, this was uh, Classic Dove, and this was 200 days building a starter house. Uh, and it looks fantastic. But alright guys, see you in the next one where probably, we're probably not going to be spending 200 days doing something. But uh, still another big project. Could be quite cool. Thanks for watching.